Hi guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So in today's video, I will be turning some average vegetable cooking oil into nitroglycerin with a hint of biodiesel. But before I start doing anything, I need to tell you that you should never repeat what you will see here. I made this video to explore the science and possibilities of what can safely be made using some basic chemistry. All the information presented here is just common knowledge and is meant to educate people and in no way means that the experiments shown have to be replicated. The synthesis of nitroglycerin is really dangerous and without proper training and safety measures it can end up very badly. In this video I synthesize it in small amounts which in no way makes this video a guide for making explosives. I am just interested in the synthesis of a particular chemical compound and nothing else. And this video is only for educational purposes. With this disclaimer out of the way, I can now begin the synthesis. But before I start, let me tell you about what nitroglycerin even is. Most people know it as a compound used as the explosive agent in dynamite, which has been used to do a ton of important things for a very long time. Apart from that, nitroglycerin is also used as a medication for various heart diseases, so you could technically say that I am making a medicine today. I however won't be making it for any of the uses I just mentioned, and in this video I want its synthesis to be a proof of concept. After I am done making it, I will of course do a few small tests to confirm that I actually succeeded, but that's mostly it. If you want to see more you can head to my Patreon, because there's some extra content regarding nitroglycerin in there. Ok, but how I'm going to turn regular cooking oil into this explosive heart medication? Well, at first they might seem to be completely unrelated, but as things on this channel often tend to do, they actually have a ton in common. You see, the main thing that I will need to make the nitroglycerin is some glycerol, more commonly known just as glycerin, and it just so happens that it is an important component of vegetable oil. To put it simply, every fat consists of a molecule of glycerin and three long carbon chains bound to it by an ester bond, and with that in mind, all that I have to do to get the glycerin is to somehow cut off these long carbon chains. There are actually quite a few reactions that let me do that. They are pretty similar because they all leave me with some glycerin in the end, but every one of them utilizes the carbon chains in a different way. I could go with the classic saponification reaction, which just uses a strong base like sodium hydroxide to break apart the fat molecule and produce glycerin along with some salts of fatty acids, more commonly known as soap, but I opted not to do that, because this soap would be probably a pain to separate from the glycerin, and in the future I plan to do a separate video on the soap making process. The reaction that I wanted to go with is known as a transesterification. It is pretty similar to the saponification, but instead of sticking a sodium or potassium atom onto the carbon chains and making soap, it just replaces the large glycerin molecule with for example a small methyl group, making glycerin and turning the fatty acids into a easily combustible and high energy fuel, which is known as biodiesel and can be used as a substitute of petroleum in many things. I also plan to make a separate video about it, but I figured that it would be more interesting to make it now rather than the soap, because while everyone knows the properties of soap, biodiesel is a little bit more obscure and I wanted to see if it is a good replacement for traditional fuels. Anyway, to start making the glycerin, I got myself this brand new, never before opened bottle of sunflower oil, which I definitely didn't steal from my kitchen. I also took the label off to not promote a random vegetable oil company, and to start the synthesis, I opened the bottle and poured about 400 ml of the oil into a large beaker. It looked really quite nice, because vegetable oil is a very refractive liquid, when I finished pouring it, I got the beaker onto a hot plate and added a thermometer. For the reaction to take place at a reasonable rate, the oil has to be warmed up to around 55 degrees Celsius, so I turned on the heating and waited for everything to heat up. In the meantime, I have to prepare the second reagent for this reaction, which is a solution of sodium hydroxide in methanol. 
It consists of 100 ml of anhydrous methanol, which I measured and added into a beaker with stirring. Then I weighed out 4.5 grams of sodium hydroxide and added it to the methanol. It dissolves rather slowly and warms the methanol up quite a bit. It also makes everything cloudy for some reason, but I honestly didn't care and just waited for everything to dissolve. At some point, the solution got so hot that some methanol vapor started escaping and to prevent that, I covered the beaker with this plastic thing and after around 20 minutes, I was left with a nice and somewhat clear solution. I put it aside for now and came back to check on the oil. It warmed up quite a bit and I could actually see these waves resulting from uneven heating. They looked really nice and I stared at them for way too long. But now, it was unfortunately time to destroy them using a steel bar to even out the oil's temperature. After some time, it finally reached the target temperature of 55 degrees Celsius, but then I blinked and now the temperature neared 60 degrees, which wasn't ideal, but still shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Now that everything was ready, I poured the sodium hydroxide and methanol solution into the hot oil. As expected, they didn't mix at all by themselves, so to allow the reaction to take place, I had to use strong steering. As soon as the methanol started to mix with the oil, everything quickly changed color from light yellow to orange, and that's probably because some natural impurities in the vegetable oil also reacted with the sodium hydroxide to form some undesired junk. I let everything react for about an hour while closely maintaining the temperature. As I said previously, the reaction going on here is known as a transesterification. The sodium hydroxide allows for the breakage of the ester bonds in the fat molecules, and since there is methanol present, it sticks that onto the newly created fatty acids, making biodiesel and my precious glycerin. After letting everything react for an hour, I now had to cool the reaction mix down to room temperature, but before I took the beaker off the heat, I noticed a large chunk of something just chilling in there. That's probably just some biodiesel. It has a tendency to turn into a forbidden jello when cooling down, and that's exactly what happened when the mixture got to room temperature. Along with the gel, there is also a layer of something orange on the bottom of the beaker, and that's supposed to be my glycerin. It is really dirty, so I will have to purify it before I can use it for anything, and as the first purification step, I have to get rid of the gel. I decanted most of it into a smaller beaker, there was still some mix with the glycerin, but I will remove it later, because now I can finally take a look at my biodiesel. It is not exactly pure, and to use it in for example a car, it would have to be purified, but as a heat source, it should still work fine. To test its flammability, I got some onto a metal can and started blasting it with a blowtorch. It had some trouble igniting, but when it finally started burning, it produced a really sizable flame, which to my surprise, didn't produce any nasty soot. It also burned for quite a long time and left next to no residue, so in my opinion biodiesel is a really good fuel. I will definitely cover it in more detail in a future video, but for now, I sealed it in this very sketchy looking glass jar and got back to the glycerin. It is still mixed with a lot of the gelled biodiesel and to remove it, I transferred everything into a smaller beaker and tried to scoop out some of the gel using a spatula, which worked only to some extent. When most of it was gone, I poured the mixture into an even smaller beaker and I could now see two distinct layers form. I decanted off the upper one, which was still the biodiesel, and I was now left with some very crude glycerin, and to start cleaning it up, I first have to adjust its pH. It is now very basic because of all the sodium hydroxide that I used earlier, and I have to lower it to about 1 using some 34% hydrochloric acid. I started adding it dropwise with strong steering, and after I added just a few milliliters, the color quickly changed from orange to light yellow, which was rather weird. A lot of white junk also precipitated out, and that was the newly created sodium chloride. I checked the pH and now it was around 1, 
which was suspiciously exactly what I wanted. Also, a random layer of oil appeared on top of the glycerin, and to get rid of it I used a separatory funnel. Ideally, I would also now get rid of the insoluble salt, but I figured that I will do that later. Ok, so now to purify the glycerin further, I have to adjust its pH to around 7 which is neutral, and I did that by slowly adding a dilute sodium hydroxide solution to the glycerin. I frequently checked the pH with test papers to make sure not to overshoot, which happened anyway. It made the whole thing turn orange almost instantly, which was pretty weird, and confirmed that I have made some kind of an oil pH indicator. To get the pH to 7, I used some dilute hydrochloric acid, and after some trial and error, I managed to get everything just right, and now it was time to evaporate down the solution. It now should consist only of glycerin, water and some sodium chloride. I removed the water by boiling it for a whole 4 hours, and in the end, I was left with a little bit of brown glycerin, along with some sodium chloride. I poured it into a vial while trying to keep all of the salt in the beaker. There was still a lot of glycerin stuck to it, but I figured that I would just sacrifice it for the greater good. Anyway, after all of this work, I am now left with a few milliliters of some pretty pure glycerin, it is still quite brown due to some colored impurities, and combined with its viscosity, it really looks like honey. I could clean it up even further, but that's a rather long and complicated process, and for the nitroglycerin synthesis, the small amount of contaminants really doesn't affect anything, apart from the color. When it comes to the yield, I managed to get 5.3 grams of it, which isn't a lot, but the whole procedure isn't very efficient, so I declare this a pretty good yield. It is more than enough for making the nitroglycerin, because I am going to only synthesize a really small amount of it. Synthesizing nitroglycerin on a large scale is just extremely dangerous, and I really have no point in doing that. Also, before I start making anything, let me tell you again that under no circumstances you should ever try this at home, I am doing it on a really small scale just to showcase the synthesis. I also have a ton of safety measures in place, such as wearing this leather armor, a gas mask and gloves, as well as having my fume food running all the time. Ok, so to finally start making the nitroglycerin, I first have to prepare an ice bath, which will be very important later. I made it by just dumping some ice and water into a metal bowl. Now I have to make something called the nitration mix, which consists of roughly equal amounts of concentrated sulfuric and nitric acid. The acids have to be highly concentrated, because otherwise the reaction won't work. I used 96% sulfuric acid, along with 83% red fuming nitric acid that I made from fertilizer in a previous video. I poured about 20 ml of each acid into a small beaker with a thermometer. The temperature control in this reaction is extremely important, because if it is too low, the reaction won't occur, and when it is too high, there is a high risk of an explosion or a runaway nitration. Compounding the two acids generates quite a lot of heat, which is a rather good thing because it gives the reaction a starting temperature that is ideal for the formation of nitroglycerin. The target temperature that I want this reaction to have is around 30 degrees Celsius, because it gives a pretty decent reaction rate for this concentration of nitric acid. When the temperature was just right, I got the glycerin vial and added a few drops of it into the nitration mix. The addition makes the temperature go up quite a bit, so I have to cool everything down in the ice bath from time to time. I also can't add too much glycerin at once, since that would result in a runaway nitration and possibly an explosion, which wouldn't be too great, and that's why I have to really closely monitor the temperature. The reaction that is going on here is actually not a nitration as many people would think. In a nitration, the sulfuric acid rips the water from the nitric acid, creating a nitromium ion that can go and nitrate, for example, an aromatic ring, creating a nitro compound, Nitroglycerin, despite having the prefix nitro, is actually a nitric acid ester. It is more similar to the fatty acid esters found in vegetable oil rather than, for example, TNT. When it comes to the mechanism of the reaction, the sulfuric acid catalyzes the esterification reaction between the nitric acid and glycerin, 
by removing the created water, which makes this a rather simple reaction. Anyway, I continued the glycerin additions in about 5 minute intervals while constantly stirring and monitoring the temperature. After a while, a layer of a dark yellow oil appeared on top of the reaction mix, and that should be the nitroglycerin. After some time, adding more glycerin stopped doing anything, so I let the mixture react for 10 more minutes, and when I felt that it was ready, I poured a lot of ice-cold distilled water straight into the reaction mix to dilute it and separate the nitroglycerin, which now sank to the bottom as this brown oil. I scooped it out using a pipette and put it in this vial, and before I start to experiment with it, I wanted to get rid of the leftover waste acid, and I did that by dumping it into a bowl filled with a sodium bicarbonate solution. It made tons of carbon dioxide bubbles, and converted the acids to sodium nitrate and sulfate, which are safe enough to be poured down the drain. Anyway, now back to the nitroglycerin. In terms of appearance, it kind of resembles the oil that I started this whole project with. Normally, it should be colorless, but it is brown due to the impurities in the glycerin that was used to make it. Under low temperatures, it should become more white and viscous, and to test that, I put the vial into an ice bath, and after a few minutes of sitting there, the nitroglycerin was indeed visibly more viscous and a little cloudy. When it comes to the yield, I actually didn't measure how much nitroglycerin I managed to make, because I wanted to quickly record the experiments and destroy it to not worry about storing it for a long time, because it can be very tricky, especially when my nitroglycerin is impure and still has a lot of acids left over from its synthesis, as you can see by the formation of nitrogen dioxide gas in the vial, and this makes it more unstable, so I wanted to get over with the testing as fast as I could. As the first experiment, I wanted to test out its flammability, because contrary to what you might think, nitroglycerin doesn't explode upon being ignited, it is even quite hard to get going, and burns really quickly with a bright flame. This is actually a good way of safely disposing of it, and after I am done experimenting with it, I am going to dispose of what I have left this way. Also, an interesting property of nitroglycerin is that upon entering the bloodstream, it can make your veins larger by relaxing the muscles on their walls, which can be life-saving, and to this day is used as a treatment for various heart diseases, but as a side effect, you can get an extreme headache that lasts for days, because the veins in your brain also enlarge, and I actually experienced that when a small droplet of the nitroglycerin got onto my skin. Okay, so now it is time for the grand finale, which is the explosive decomposition of nitroglycerin. You see, it being an organic nitric acid ester makes it really not want to exist, but it has just the amount of will to live, to not explode by just existing, and need some starting energy to explosively decompose to some very stable end products and a ton of energy. To demonstrate this, I got a tiny amount of it onto an anvil and hit it with a hammer. It required quite a strong heat, but detonated really well, and if I wasn't wearing curing protection, I would probably be temporarily deaf. It's just so freaking loud. It, however, isn't too sensitive, because I had a lot of failed attempts. To increase its sensitivity, it can be smacked on a piece of paper, which disintegrates into thousands of tiny pieces, but the best results by far are when it is contained in aluminum foil. Anyway guys, I hope that you learned something from this video, and now don't want to make nitroglycerin on your own. Thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, also, as always, big thanks go to my Patreons, especially Isaac Von Liu, Lorenzo and Dangerous Lab, as well as R2D2, Riley Reprogu, Joseph Kudi and MI. If you would also want to support my work, you can consider becoming a Patreon, and see you guys in the next video.